This video is sponsored by the Nassau Inn, Princeton. I'm Jess Niederer. I'm the farmer at Chickney Creek Farm in Pennington, New Jersey, and that is where we are today. I'm talking about the crop broccoli today, and in particular broccoli leaves. I think most people have had broccoli. It um, is a crop that grows best in cool weather in New Jersey, so that means we do a spring crop, and we also do a fall crop. We, on our farm, actually skip the spring crop entirely because broccoli is challenged by heat. And in the spring, we can start to get some days that are in the 80s and upper 90s, and that makes broccoli go to flower. And the part of broccoli that you're usually eating is a flower. It's the flower bud, so that green tree-like portion is ready to burst open into yellow flowers if the days turn too hot. So spring broccoli, very challenging, not my favorite. Broccoli in the fall, however, is growing when the days are getting cooler and cooler. It's a much nicer environment for broccoli. So you're able to harvest that floret head at a more flexible schedule without having to worry about it turning into a bunch of yellow flowers. The part about broccoli that people don't seem to recognize very often is that the leaves are delicious and they're a whole separate crop on their own. If you look at the broccoli field behind me, you mostly see leaves. And that's most of what the broccoli plant is, is a lot of leaves gathering energy from the sun to make that broccoli crown. Um, but the leaves can be their own delicious crop by themselves. They're actually very similar to kale or to collard greens, but I think they taste even better than collard greens. They have more of a smooth texture. They have more of a broccoli flavor than collard greens do. So it's something that uh, should really be explored when you're thinking about broccoli and the crop broccoli, is this whole other use for all of these broccoli leaves. When we harvest broccoli leaves, we can just pull the whole leaf right off the plant. You don't need any special tools. You just yank the leaf on downwards. And when I cook broccoli, I like to take it off of the stalk, which is pretty hard and thick and crunchy. Um, if you have any rabbits or hamsters, those would love to eat the stalk, but for me, it's not my favorite part. So I strip the leaf right off the stalk, and then you've got this whole piece to cook with. I like to chop it up and saute it really lightly with some onions or garlic and have it by itself. Um, it's really great in a kale salad type of direction. So the broccoli leaves can definitely be eaten cooked, but they are tender enough and sweet enough this time of year to sample them raw. It tastes, mm, it tastes like a combination of kale and collards, but with a really great mild broccoli flavor too. It's one of the crops that will get sweeter as the weather gets cooler, and it's the sweetest it can be after it gets its first frost in the fall. We haven't had our first frost yet. In New Jersey, the first frost is typically after October 15th, so that's when the broccoli leaves will be at their sweetest. I am an organic farmer. That means that I get inspected by the United States Department of Agriculture to make sure that I'm not farming with any chemicals. Um, I can only farm with natural products. So when we fertilize our broccoli crop, we do it with compost that we make on the farm from leaves. And broccoli likes to eat a lot of compost. Broccoli also has this one particular pest that loves to eat it called the imported cabbage worm. Um, you can probably, oops, so there's one of those moths right there. That moth, that one too, they're all over the place. These moths are imported cabbage worm. Um, they're very pretty and they're flying around leaving eggs on the broccoli plants, on the leaves. And those eggs will hatch out to be fuzzy, velvety green caterpillars that can eat an incredible amount of broccoli leaves if you let them. So those are one of the things that are very difficult for us to deal with with broccoli and the related crops. We do have an organic spray called Bacillus thuringiensis, and we call it BT for short. It's actually just a bacteria 
that will eat those caterpillars and it doesn't bother anything else it only bothers those caterpillars that are bothered that are eating the broccoli so that's one of our wonderful organic tools for growing broccoli in New Jersey some other issues that we have with any of the crops on our farm are that lots of animals like to eat vegetables it's not just children that like vegetables it's also the deer and the rabbits um, so what we do for deer and rabbits are actually we have a farm dog named Tilly and Tilly is a Border Collie Australian Shepherd mix and she will take care of any of the mammalian competitors for our crops. So the farm dog um, will kill the groundhogs and the rabbits. She actually did kill a deer this year um, and that's part of her job as a dog on a farm to protect the crops. I know it sounds like a little bit of a harsh reality, but um, she is a really great dog for protecting crops and making it so that farmers can actually reap what they've planted and keep it protected from all the other animals. I grew up on this very farm right here in Pennington, New Jersey. Um, I've lived here my whole life except for the the periods of time when I went away to college and to travel around the world a little bit since and a very young age have been working here um, one neat thing about a farm is that there are jobs for every age of a person in a family so by the time I was eight I was helping with our hay and straw harvest I could definitely lift up a bale of hay when I was eight years old and stack it where it needed to be I helped out by taking care of animals when I was a kid and had a really big chore schedule assigned to me. Um, and I think that sometimes I resented that, having to do so much of that work. But for the most part, I really learned to love working very hard and doing physical work. Um, I still enjoy it now. And when I'm farming here, I'm used to that physical part. I'm used to doing a lot of harvesting and weeding and planting. That's most of my time, but there's still other parts of my job that use different parts of my brain. So I also run a small business. I run the farm business. It means that I have to be very good at writing. It means that I have to be really good at math, especially for all the financial records and especially for the crop planning portion. De deciding what we're going to grow in every given year is it uses it a lot of math the whole time. Um, you also have to just be really good at learning how to get along with people and talk to different government entities and um, different restaurants and learn how to work with chefs to get your vegetables to the market and get them uh, sold so that you're, you've got a successful business. Goodbye and don't forget to eat your broccoli leaves.